Good morning. Hey, welcome to our third message of Christmas at the movies. This has been a blast. And today we're going to talk about a movie that has the utmost biblical relevance. It's called The Grinch. Actually, I don't think I recall reading about the Grinch in the Bible. If you guys have found the Grinch in the Bible, let me know. Although, I think there is one guy in the Bible that could equate to the Grinch because he tried to steal Christmas from the world. You know who that would be? King Herod. Good. Whoever said that over here, you win. You get an A today. We read about this in Matthew 2, verse 16. It says, then Herod, when he saw that he had been tricked by the wise men, became furious, and he sent and killed all the male children in Bethlehem and in all that region who were two years old and under, according to the time that he ascertained from the wise men. So one of the things I see in this account is the amazing grace of God that he speaks to Joseph, the father of the baby Jesus, in a dream in the middle of the night, and he says, Joseph, get up, take your family to Egypt. Because God knew that he had to protect Jesus until his appointed time to come and give his life on the cross for the forgiveness of all of our sins. It's amazing that God was orchestrating everything from from the very beginning. And so, When we hear the story of Herod's heinous act, it really makes us conclude that the dude's evil. He's totally off his rocker. And obviously, there are grave differences between Herod and the Grinch. Because as we see in the Grinch, there is some redeemable value to the dude. And relatable, which is my next point, is... I see a little of the Grinch in me. I don't know about you. You look at this picture, you can see there's a lot of me in the Grinch. (laughs) I got to admit, I can get a little grumpy at Christmas time. I don't know about you guys. I get tired of the commercialism. I go, one more commercial on a Lexus car. I'm going to blow one up the next time I see it. (laughs) Some of us have even resorted to not even going shopping physically anymore. That everything's done online. That you can literally do your Christmas shopping in about half an hour. And it's delivered that night. It's just crazy how we see things change in our world. And it's easy for us to take on some of the characteristics of the Grinch in our lives. There's too many parties. I mean, I got to fast, and I got to go on a diet, an extreme exercise plan after Christmas, because I gain about 40 pounds. (laughs) I have tasted some of the best Christmas cookies that I think have ever been created in the history of mankind. And I can't say no to them. (laughs) And then there's those gatherings, especially the family gatherings, that you're obligated to go, but you really don't want to go because everybody has a Cousin Eddie in your family. (laughs) Raise your hand if you have a Cousin Eddie in your family. You go away from that family gathering, you go, that dude is just a knucklehead. I've even known a few that you despise Christmas carols of all things. You need therapy. (laughs) Christmas carols are wonderful. They start playing them on the radio right after Thanksgiving, and I listen to nothing but Christmas music for the month of December. Good for you. Thank you. (laughs) I love it. But depending on the situation, I got to admit, the Grinch comes out of me. And there are parts of my heart that I need God to enlarge. 
Ideally, Christmas is a wonderful time of year for many of us. And then we watch the Hallmark Christmas movies. Oh my gosh. There's so much estrogen in those movies. There's always that couple of opposites that seem to fall in love. There is always an orphan child that gets a family. Or there's a wayward sibling that seems to repent and come home right at the moment that the family's about ready to say grace for their Christmas dinner. I'd rather watch the Nuggets pummel somebody. (laughs) But Christmas can be a challenging time for us. Admittedly, we had our blue Christmas service last Sunday night, thanks to the leadership of and the vision of Sherry Brewer. And it was a wonderful time of just bringing a time of reflection and and, uh, perspective of remembering those who have gone before us and realizing that our lives have a little hole and some a big hole in our hearts because of our loss. And so I want to just throw out there that I think every one of us this Christmas season could use a little heart surgery. Amen. And I, I just can't get over the reality that God is continually doing a work on each of our hearts. He spoke of this prophetically in Ezekiel 36, verse 26, where God said, Moreover, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you, and I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. That's a prophetic word that was fulfilled in the Grinch. (laughs) But I know that, in, in all seriousness, I need God to soften my heart on a regular basis. Not just at Christmas time, but every day. And I pray that you come away from this Christmas season with a renewed heart. With an expanded heart. Because there's this thing called the hardening of the heart. I'm not talking about in medical terms. But what I mean by the hardness of the heart, that uh, psychologists call this burnout. It can be burnout at your job. It can be burnout in your family. It could be burnout in your life. And Herod and the Grinch, I think, had a bad case of burnout. And it's a natural byproduct that happens when we continually face the challenges of our day-to-day life. We become hardened emotionally, and it's hard to laugh when other people are laughing, and it's hard to cry or demonstrate any emotion. We basically become numb emotionally. We lose uh, a sense of genuinely caring for others that you should be caring for. In fact, we become irritated when we hear other people's struggles and we just want to isolate and we just say, I don't want any more of it. And we loathe those situations that demand social interaction. Maybe we've lost the passion for the things that used to give us great joy. And here's where it really becomes difficult, where we actually become suspicious of other people. And we automatically think, what's their angle? What are they going to manipulate out of me? Or if I trust and love this person, when are they going to leave me or reject me like everyone else has? You see, those kinds of thinking patterns lead to a hardening of heart, and it repels people away, it repels us from others, And it even repels God away from us that we don't experience that joy and the life that God wants to pour into our hearts, not just at Christmas, 
but every day of our lives. But in the Grinch, there's this adorable person called Cindy Lou. We all need a Cindy Lou in our life. I love how Cindy Lou pursued the Grinch. She never gave up on him. Cindy Lou was the only one in the whole community of Whoville that believed that the Grinch was worth something. She was empathetic to him that he shouldn't be isolating. He shouldn't be up on Grinch Mountain alone. We need to invite him to our party. And I love the scene where the Grinch is stealing all the presents. And Cindy Lou hears it, and she goes down, and she finds the Grinch stealing all the presents. And he's hiding behind the Christmas tree and talking to her like he's Santa Claus. And before she goes back up to go to bed, she tells Santa, Santa, don't forget the Grinch because there's something sweet in him. And it captures the Grinch's heart when he hears Cindy Lou say there's something redeemable about him. So in the end, Cindy Lou is actually the person that brings reconciliation between the Grinch and the whole community of Whoville. She's the bridge that connects them together so that the Grinch can find an enlarged heart and the Grinch can find love in his heart, not just for himself, but for the people of Whoville. Can you see the connection of what I'm alluding to here? This is sort of a picture of Christ, of Jesus, of the story of Christmas. In Matthew 1, verse 19, as an angel appears to Joseph, the father of Jesus, it says, and her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of God, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit, an immaculate conception. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Jesus actually means Savior. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel. We sang about Emmanuel this morning. Emmanuel means God with us. So it's obvious that the real wonder of Christmas, it's not about the Grinch at all. That's not why we were talking about it this morning. The Grinch is just helping us to have a greater understanding in a picture that the good news is that Mary was conceived and bearing the Son of God that is to come and become the Savior of the world. The good news is that God came. God pursued us. God came to redeem us back from our rebellion and our isolation from God. Emmanuel means God with us. In other words, Jesus was the embodiment of God himself, that Jesus was fully God, yet fully man. It's one of those great mysteries, but God knew that he had to become man in order to come and sacrifice his life for all of our sins. So when you think about it, God the Father, the Alpha, and the Omega, meaning the first and the last, that he was before creation even began, 
and he will exist for all of eternity. This God, the all-wise, the all-powerful, the creator of the heavens and the earth, actually became man and lived among us 2,000 years ago, and he came to die as a sacrifice for all of our sins. See, that's the good news that radically changed my life back in 1973. I know that was a long time ago, guys. See, when I heard this very message that God pursued me, that God came not just for the world, but he came for Kirk Yamaguchi because of his love for me. When I heard that, I couldn't help but open my heart to him. Because the love that I was longing for, the love that I was needing in my heart, I suddenly realized was only found in him. And so wrap your minds around the reality of this amazing pursuing God. That he pursues us because it's the nature of his love. It's who he is. And just like Cindy Lou continually pursued the Grinch, even when the Grinch would do the heinous things he did to bring to wreak havoc on the people of Whoville, Cindy Lou continued to pursue him because she knew there was something sweet in his heart. But God, every day, pursues every one of us. He pursues us all year, not just on Christmas. In Matthew 18, 12, Jesus said, what do you think? If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them has gone astray, does he not leave the 99 on the mountains and go in search of the one that went astray? And if he finds it truly, I say to you, he rejoices over it more than over the 99 that never went astray. So it is not the will of my Father who is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. You being here today, regardless of where you are and how much you're looking at Jesus today, God is pursuing you. God is pursuing me. It is his desire that all of our hearts get captured by his love and pursuit of us in a way that our hearts enlarge and become transformed and softened. We all know, most of us, that sheep really have no natural means of protection. The only way a sheep can be protected is when they band together in a herd. But when they wander away and go astray individually, they are free game to any predators. Wolves, bears, New England patriots, any patriots that are out there. <laughs> Talking to a shepherd, an actual shepherd, a few years ago, he said, we always find one rebel. There's always one rebel in the herd that just inherently will wander off and want to do his own thing. And he said, that's the one we got to watch for. And I think the Lord has a watch on us because of his shepherd's heart. Once in a while, a sheep will just put their head down and just start eating and not look up to notice that they've wandered away. And I think that's more what happens to many of us. That as life puts our nose to the grindstone and we're just trying to live life, we're just trying to survive the day to day, we don't realize how far we've strayed away from God the Father. We don't realize how hardened our hearts have become. And so God at Christmas time is that time of Advent where we, we remember what God has done for us and the hope and the idea is that that lifts our head up, that we look around and we can ascertain that I have strayed away from God. 
and I need to be found again. God is pursuing you. God never gives up. Now, I'm going to shock the worship team because I'm going to invite them to come up. I usually am not done this quick. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. <laughs> you see, when, when we wander off and, and we isolate, that what happens is we become vulnerable to the enemy. That the enemy has come to steal, kill, and destroy. And when we isolate and remove ourselves from fellowship and support of our brothers and sisters, you are free game to the enemy's deception, the enemy's lies, and the enemy causing us to grow deeper and deeper into a hardness of hearts. We need each other. And I just pray that as this service goes on, that God calls you back, not just to his love, but through him loving you through others. That's why I believe we need fellowship. Now, God's love is called agape love. Agape love is described as being perfect love, of being unconditional, of being sacrificial, and being pure, that, that, that there's no wrong intent in God. Maybe in one another, but not in God. That God came to save us and to lead us into new life. Just like Cindy Lou believed in the Grinch, the Lord has never stopped believing in us. He knows us by name. He knows the number of hairs on our head. He knows us so intimately that he knows our hearts. He knows how hardened it is. And he's saying, open your heart again to me. Because Emmanuel means God with us. It's a confirmation that God broke into the world, that God broke into the darkness, brought his kingdom through his son, and he uses Jesus to demonstrate his love, his compassion, and his mercy for every one of us. The Grinch seemed unreachable to the people of Whoville, but never unreachable to Cindy Lou. You may feel unreachable, you may feel like you have done so much that you're unredeemable. But God's love never ceases. And so, let me conclude with this. We all need to take some time, maybe today, to have a spiritual EKG. Let God put the monitors on your heart. And let God reveal to you the condition of your heart. If it is soft, if God has expanded it, and you are filled and embrace his love, then live in thankfulness of what God's given you and share it with others. But if there is some hardness of heart, it may be in just one relationship. It may be with one person. And God reveals to us that your hardness of heart is not just blocking us in relationships, with one another, but it's breaking the relationship with him. That's why God wants us to live in peace. That's why he wants us to forgive or we won't be forgiven. Because through forgiveness and through love, God continues to soften us because we experience him. The second thing is take a heart softener. And what that is, it's not a pill. It's not in a liquid. When you haven't eaten enough roughage, what it is, is you take Jesus in. Is you grow in your life with him. If you haven't prayed in weeks or months, take some time today and just say, Jesus, I miss you. Will you come back to me? And he's waiting. He's waiting for us to just to say, Jesus, come. The third thing is, 
be a Cindy Lou. What I mean by that is we have our little business cards, invite that ha- our invitations to the Christmas Eve service. Who is somebody that maybe God's put in your heart that if you invite them to Christmas Eve, they'll come with you and God wants them to meet him? Or God wants that person to become reconnected to him? God wants to soften their heart as well as yours. When we realize that God created us to love our neighbor as ourself, we become a Cindy Lou and do it in practical ways, by loving them, by reaching out to them, and by inviting them. Be a Cindy Lou. Be praying, Lord, who are two or three people that you want me to invite? And then the last thing is give, give back. Giving back is so life-giving to us. The boxing day that we're going to have Wednesday night, that we're going to box the f- boxes full of food, is an amazing opportunity for you to do something that you're sending God's love to somebody in need. I, I think boxing day is a very easy way for us to give back. So you might bring some perishable, non-perishable food to add, some toiletries or maybe some wrapping paper that will help us to wrap all of the boxes. It's, it's a great time, and we'll be down in the, in the chapel. Those are very practical ways that we can take the Grinch out of all of us this Christmas. So let's stand as we worship. And let's pray for a softening of the hearts in us. Shall we do that? Lord, I I just pray for revelation that you put within each of us. In some of us, it may be very small, but there is is an area of, of hardness that each of us have, Lord. It may be towards a person, or it could be towards this season because of different reasons. Some very understandable. But Holy Spirit, we pray that you would break in right now into each of our hearts as we wait on you, Lord. And Lord, speak to us of your love. Speak to us of how you never stop pursuing us. And speak to us, Lord, how you want to use us to be Cindy Luz in the world. Not just Christmas, but all year long. Thank you, Lord. As we worship you, come and speak to us, Lord.